Hi guys, it's Erica. I will be your host for this clay and chat today. And so on this chat, it's kind of a podcast where I just talk about the various parts of my process and what I'm working on, and then some of the other crafty things that I've gotten my hands into. So um, if that's something you're into, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this episode of Clay and Chat, um, I've got a couple things. If you've watched a couple of my episodes, you know that I like to share some of my other crafty things. And so that's mostly knitting or crochet. And so I have a couple of things that I've finished and something that I'm going to start. So I'll start with those. But first, I figured I'd also do a segment of some of my handmade mugs. So I actually collect handmade mugs as well as make them. So I collect other artists and I thought that this would be a great time to just showcase some of those pieces and share them with the world and let you guys see them. So what I am drinking out of today is a mug by Carolyn Bulkley and it's this gorgeous little owl mug and I got this for Christmas from my husband and she just does amazing work. I don't, it's, it's wild to me as a potter. I've been doing pottery for about four years and it's amazing to me that there are still pieces out there that I'm like, I don't know how they did that. It's honestly that amazing. So like, for example, like this part right here, I don't, how did she get it so perfect looking? I don't know. But if you guys haven't heard of her, she is a, another Oregon native. And so we're both from Oregon and her work is just always really nice, really lightweight, really great feel and everything. So I thought I'd share with that with you. And then I am drinking a uh, Bigelow peppermint tea. I think that it's decaf. I didn't actually look at the tag. I certainly hope so. Otherwise, I'm going to be up kind of late tonight, but that's okay. We shall drink tea together and have a good time. So we're going to go ahead and get started with um, other crafty things. Okay, so for my other crafty things, on um, the last episode, I told you guys that I had finished one sock out of a pair and I actually finished the other one. And I've been wearing these for the past couple days and they're really nice. I will say that I'm not a huge fan of the yarn. It's actually, um, I think it's by Premier Yarns and it's Cozy Toes or that could be totally wrong. Cotton Collage, that's what it is. And so um, it's a cotton yarn for socks. And so I don't know, it's not, it's just not my favorite to wear, I guess. It's not as warm and I don't think it holds its shape as well as like a super wash wool would. So, um, but here they are. So here's one and then here's the second. Obviously they're a pair, but um, yeah, they went really good. I, there was some issues, like I said, on the heel, I had some gapping issues on one, but this one was the second one I did and it just, it was, it closed up really nice and I don't have really too many issues at all. Uh, this was my first pair of knitted socks that I actually finished. So, big accomplishment there, you know, actually made a pair. So, you know, a complete set of socks the way it should be. So that went really well. And then the other thing I ended up, I just dropped those, but um, the other thing that I ended up finishing up were these cute little mittens. And these are for me because I've been going on walks in the evenings and here in Oregon, it's just been been really cold at night and so uh you know we're getting freezing temperatures which is you know we don't get that a ton here in Oregon so at least not on the coast where I'm from so uh but I have been getting really cold hands and so I was like I'm gonna make myself a pair of mittens it's something I can do I should do it so yeah I made a cute little pair and this pattern is by uh tin can knits and I think it's called the simplest mittens or something like that but um I agree very simple to make I had no issues. Uh, they were just, they were really quick to knit up and everything and really fast. So I really enjoyed making them and I'm sure that I'll make more for family members and whatnot. So those were really good. And then, so the next project that I'm gonna work on is actually my first knitted sweater and I'm making it for myself because that way I can try it on and actually see if it fits and everything. And um, I'm gonna be using this beautiful yarn from uh, Knit Picks. It's called Brava Tweed. It's a worsted yarn, but look how pretty that color is. And then it's got all these little flecks of tweed in it. And I don't know, I think it's gonna be a really pretty sweater. I still need to figure out what pattern I'm doing, so I should probably figure that out soon. So hopefully soon, so more on that. So we'll definitely get into that. Okay, now for the next part of our segment, we are going to be 
um, just going over my glaze kiln results. So I did have a glaze kiln opening posted and I figured in this episode I would go over some of my favorite pieces and just kind of go into a little bit more depth for them and then also kind of go over my not so favorite piece. There was one that I was not super happy about um, which I will end up keeping for myself because I just and I'll explain why I'm not into it. So we'll get into that. that. Let's start with the goods first. So I think my favorite glaze combo from this last batch would have to be um, this one here. And so this is the Aurora Green from Mako. And it's on this Graffito Moth Mug. And I did Mako Dark Flux on the top. And I think the reason that I love this one so much is because if you've seen a moth, they've got these really, of course, everybody's probably seen a moth, right? But um, they've got really gorgeous spots on them. And they just like, there's so many different colors and variations of moths and everything. And so uh, I didn't really think that, think about that, like being on a moth mug and like, it wasn't something I like made the connection and I'm like, oh, I'm so artsy. Let me really think about a really deep meaning behind this glaze. Uh, it's one of those happy accidents, and I'm just really glad it happened. I mean, look at that on the handle. That's crazy. And then I love this, like, darker spot up front there. So that was one of my favorites, and this was also a new design from this last batch that I absolutely love, and we'll continue to be making more of these because I just, I really enjoyed it. And I think that, you know, the people on Instagram, and I think on here as well, enjoyed it as well. So more of those to come. So that was a really good one. And then the next glaze combo that I was just smitten with was, and I know that this is a popular combo. I know a lot of people have done this combo. Um, it is the winter wood from Mako and it's got that light flux on top. And the way it makes that light flux, I think my husband said it reminds him of like cookies and cream. And I totally see that. Uh, it just, yeah, it runs beautifully. Like you can really tell the difference on that. And then the matte finish with like against that gloss glaze of the the picture there just feels really nice. Really great mug. This is a hand-built mug with some wood grain texture and it just feels really nice to, you know, hold. It feels like a good weight and everything. And um, yeah, really good win on that one. So that was another one that I was really happy with out of this restock. And then let's see. Oh, this one. Oh goodness, this one. I think this one I'm mostly in love with just because the shape of it is really nice. And then the handle is really nice. I tried a different handle this time around. And then the glaze is really nice. And so, and then if you love Lord of the Rings, you're gonna love this mug. So this is a fellowship of the rings walking all the way around the mug. You've got all your people there. And then, yeah, so for this mug, I did that little, um, indent right there it's kind of hard to see I'm sure but it just it adds a really nice element the lip is just really nice on this mug and then the way that glaze just really hits against that black under glaze and gets like kind of blue it's really pretty and then for the handle it's flat so for example this one if you can tell this has kind of a divot for the thumb which is really nice it feels good to hold and everything and it looks really nice but I will say I really enjoy this. This just flat, just no divot, just straight on. And I think it just, it feels really nice to hold and it feels really sturdy. And one thing that I don't like in mugs is when it's a really thin handle and you go to pick it up and you feel like it's gonna break. And that's just not something that you wanna feel when you go to pick up a mug. You wanna feel like it's sturdy, it's gonna last you a long time and that it's good. So that was definitely my favorite. And then if you're interested, the combo on this is uh, Amico Seaweed with the Amico Oatmeal on top. And that's always a really good, a really good combo. And it almost makes it look like iridescent. So really great combo on that one as well. And then let's see. Oh, another one I tried. Oh, sorry. Another one that I tried this time is I tried a Scrafito mug but instead of just the, you know, normal black Scrafito like this one, I actually decided to do colors. So this one has frost on the bottom and then royal purple and then the pink all from Speedball. And I carved through that to where it gives it kind of like an ombre effect. 
and it just looks really cool. I think it really fits like the Luna, like Luna vibe really well. So for a really big Luna Love Good fan, I bet this is like just the perfect mug. And then the, yeah, the top is the Mako Cenote with the dark flux on top. And if you watched my kiln opening, um, you may have heard me talk about how the Cenote that I got, this recent one, it doesn't have as much of the brown flex in it as like past ones have, uh, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, we do get a couple, let's see if I can, let me see if I can find one of them. And if you know Cenote, you know that like, it's usually a ton of brown. There's one right there. <laughs> so um, it's okay, I'm okay with it. Like, it's not a big deal. It's really pretty still. And so I'm still happy with how it looks. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything about it, but hopefully the next one I get does have the brown flex in it. So that would be nice. So that was another good one. And then let's see, let's just, I'll just show you guys these ones as well. So this is more of this graffito design. That's a little rabbit with indigo float on top and then with the dark flux. And then this is a fox. And that has uh, Mako speckled plum with dark flux on it. So. These were really good ones. I really enjoyed making them. They've got kind of like a folk type feel to them. And out of the batch, I think that these were probably my favorite just because they were a new style. And I, it's always nice when you do a new style and it actually comes out nice and not completely goofy and wonky, which I've done that. I've, you, I actually, I didn't bring it in, but um, I made one that I was like, this is gonna be so cool. This is amazing. And then I fired it and glazed it. And I was like, I don't know about this. And so I probably won't make another one of those, but that's okay because, you know, lesson learned. So yeah, those are probably my favorite of the mugs. I am gonna actually go and grab my uh, origami platter that I made it sitting over there on the island. So let me go grab that real quick to show you guys because that was something that was another thing that was really fun to make too. So let me go grab that real quick. All right, I'm back. Um, so this was an origami platter that I made and it's just, it was a slab and I did some really weird finagling with this thing because I didn't have what I needed to really make it how I wanted to. And I, I do not have patience to wait for it to be dry enough for me to form it how I want to. Um, so I just, it, I made it way more difficult on myself than I needed to, but it's just what I do. So anyway, so what this is, is it's just a slab. And what I did is I rolled out texture on the back of it and then I flipped it over and I did some texture on in the middle. And I actually, I made a mistake because after I made it, someone had said this and I was like, you know, that's a really good idea. And I should have done that, but I didn't. Um, so what they said was for this center part right here, so instead of doing that brown and making it look like wood grain, I should have done it in blue and made it look like a lake. Sometimes people are so much smarter than me, but that's okay. It looks good as it is. I just think that it could definitely be better if that was a lake. I think it would make it make a little more sense. But I think honestly my favorite view from this is like from the side when you can kind of see that wood grain and then you can also see a little bit of the black. And then I really love the, the folds and how you can really see that origami type texture there and everything. And I did have it, where is it? Oh, I did um, accidentally have it stick to the kiln shelf. So I did some grinding there and I decided to actually keep this piece for myself because A, it's first of its kind. And B, I wasn't really sure how to price it. You know, pricing is really hard for me. I just, I don't know, I don't ever wanna overprice something and just, you know, I know that yeah, sometimes pottery can be very expensive and it's a, it's a very, it's a, it's a tough craft. So I understand why people charge what they charge because a lot of work does go into all of these pieces. So I totally understand it. I just wanna make sure that I charge a fair price and that I'm not charging a high amount just because I can charge a high amount. You know, I just wanna make sure that it's fair for the customer and it's fair for me. And so with this, I just wasn't really sure how to price it. So I think it's just gonna stay in my family and it's just gonna be part of our home and it'll be good. So um, I never keep any of my pieces. So that's a good one. Okay, so we talked about the good ones. Now let's talk about the bad one. This one I'm not selling because I literally am just not happy with it. And because I'm not happy with it, I don't feel comfortable 
uh, selling it for any amount really so it's just gonna live with me again and it's just gonna be part of my family so and I've been drinking out it it's like it's fine there's nothing wrong with it it's just there's some things about it that really bug me so it was this knit mug it was the only one I made in the batch and this was that Aurora green again but instead of the dark flux I did the light flux on top and it just didn't really do too much of anything I didn't get enough crystals in there I don't know, I don't think I stirred it enough. And then also it drives me nuts how this hand, like where this handle was placed on here. I wish I would have brought it farther back to make the button sit more center, like when you hold it straight. And then it just, it warped pretty bad too. It's just, because of the buttons, it just kind of warped, which usually warping, I don't really worry about on handboat mugs because it's just, it happens. It's just the nature of things. But I mean, this one, I mean, this one's hand built. And you know, you can, you can definitely, this one just warped a bit more than I was willing to, to accept. So this one, I was not a fan of, yeah, I just, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So I'm just going to keep it. <laughs> so yeah, that is, that's about it guys. It's kind of a quick, quick little clan chat today, just because uh, usually I do an update in where I am in my pottery process, but currently I am nowhere because I'm doing a shop restock and so that just means that I'm working on the computer a lot and then I'm going to be shipping and then I also had to order a new part for my uh, kiln's foot pedal, or not my kiln, my, my wheel's foot pedal because it just decided not to work. I went out there to sand all of the bottoms of these pieces on my diamond core sanding disc thing and I step on the pedal and nothing happens. So my husband went out there and he opened it up and I guess the, I'm not even gonna attempt to say the name because I'm not gonna get it right. Uh, a piece in there, it just needs to be replaced. So I ordered that up and hopefully it gets here soon and that way I can start. And then the next time we talk, I will probably be in the process of throwing and trimming and handling and all that stuff and getting that stuff going. So yeah, that's it guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you enjoy chatting with me. I really do. Like these videos to me are like a relaxing moment to just, you know, kind of talk to you guys, even though like I'm just talking to my phone, but you know, it really does feel like I'm talking to you guys and just, um, I just really enjoy them and they're fun and just good times. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please uh, consider subscribing if you took anything away from this and uh, you know, be able to watch more videos of mine to come. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I hope you guys are well and safe. Thanks guys. Bye.